And the family of Sharif Wilson is mourning his loss. He died last weekend from multiple health issues. What makes his death all the more painful is that DNA evidence led to his release from prison last year. He spent more than 20 years behind bars after being wrongfully imprisoned. An average of 90 inmates are exonerated each year. They often face a number of physical and mental challenges as a result of their time in prison. Well, Jeff Deskovic started a foundation for exonerees. He spent 16 years in prison before DNA evidence led to his release, and he's here in our New York studio. Jeff, very nice to meet you. Thanks for having Thanks so me. much for coming in. Let me just ask you, how commonly are people wrongfully convicted of m murder? I think the uh, I think the average is about 15 to 20 percent. That's an amazing number. Uh, and how often are those who are wrongfully convicted exonerated these days? Well, I think that the pace of exonerations is very is very fast. I mean, you know, not over 90 this year, 89 last year. But I mean, that's not true if you look further than that. I really believe we have the iceberg effect going on here in the sense that what we see above the surface is just a, a fraction of what's really going on. Are, are many of these judgments vacated or overturned because of new technology with DNA evidence? Some of them are, but there's far more non-DNA exonerations than there are DNA. DNA is only around in 5 to 12 percent. Is that right? That's yes. so surprising. So in the other cases, what, what's happened? Is it witnesses that recant testimony? Uh, there's that. Sometimes it's junk science. Sometimes an alternative suspect uh, is identified. Sometimes uh, suppressed evidence is, uh, is, turn is discovered by the defense. That's just incredible. I mean, the, th the thought, of course, in this country that we're innocent until proven guilty, that an innocent person would actually spend multiple years behind bars, as you did. You were in, uh, in jail for more than 16 years, in prison for 16 years. How did you end up being convicted for a crime that you didn't commit? Uh, perfect storm. So a combination of a coerced false confession, prosecutorial misconduct, fraud by the medical examiner, and an end-up public defender. I, I lost despite a negative DNA test. Ultimately, I was cleared by further DNA testing eight years ago, which identified the actual perpetrator whose DNA was only in the database because left free while I was doing time for his crime, struck again, killing another victim three and a half years later. He was a school teacher, mother of two. I can't imagine what sort of emotional and psychological toll it must take on a human being to be incarcerated knowing that you're not guilty of this conviction. What's that like? Uh, you've you have hopelessness, helplessness, there's post-traumatic stress disorder, adjusting to being free. The uh, the difficulty of, of making choices, the feeling of moving at a slower speed than the rest of uh, society, the feeling of having been in a time capsule, awkwardness in terms of re reconnecting with um, extended uh, family members, you have to put together a social life. All these things are very difficult. And you're talking really about sort of the readjustment when you're finally released, what it's like for an exoneree to come back out. But what I'm asking you about is what was it like for those 16 years, knowing that you were locked up with actual murderers, actual rapists, actual robbers, actual drug dealers, and you know you did nothing wrong? I was very uh, frustrated. I was depressed, hopelessness, helplessness. Sometimes you think of suicide as well. And even it's hard even just to convince yourself that this is actually happening because it just seems so far far-fetched even while you're in the middle of experiencing Did it. Did you always believe that you would ultimately be exonerated and released or had you at some point given up hope? I always did up until my 15th year. I mean by then I had lost all of my appeals. Nobody was answering my letters for like four years and the parole board had slammed the door shut at me. At that point I felt confident that I was going to die in prison for a crime I didn't commit. You know it is such a tragedy with Sharif Wilson. He died so soon after being finally released. We just did a segment uh, just a couple days ago about three gentlemen who were wrongfully convicted and they've done a uh, made a $17 million settlement with uh, New York City. Uh, what are some of the challenges then? You, you uh, referred to them, but be a little more specific about some of the challenges for specifically an exoneree and how their experience is different than a parolee. Sure. Well, there's less. Uh, there's no centralized help. There's no. Ser there's you know no governmental services. So you actually get more help if you are guilty and on parole than you do if you are uh, exonerated. There is the uh, post-incarceration stigma. Yes, you were there wrongfully. How much of that actually uh, rubbed off on you? Sometimes there's lingering concerns. Were you actually innocent, and that's why you were released, or you just simply out uh, on a technicality? Uh, beyond Mr. Wilson's tragedy, I mean, just I want to point out that in the recent recent past, you know, William Lopez, who was in for 23 and a half years prior to being mm -hmm. exonerated. He was only home and free for a year and a half, and then he passed away. And then uh, earlier in the month, Dan Gristwood uh, passed away, who did nine years in prison wrongfully. He had been home for 10 years, but had only 
live for four months after finally receiving some financial compensation. You know, finally, Jeff, we've heard so many stories about ex-convicts, those who were rightfully convicted. They pay their debt to society and they come back and they talk about how difficult it is to be accepted by society. Is it, do you, did you face that same sort of difficulty even though you'd never really done anything wrong in the first place? Yeah, exactly. Yes. You were there wrongfully. How much of being in prison actually rubbed off on you? If I can just make a really quick uh, closing comment. You know, we, we've had the three exoneree deaths. We've had these plethora of exonerations. What is it going to take before we finally, you know, get some leadership from Governor Cuomo, Speaker Silver, Senator Skelos? How many more New Yorkers have to be wrongfully convicted, have their lives literally stolen from them before we can finally put politics aside and get some changes in the law to prevent this, such as videotaping interrogations, such as better identification procedures, to name just but a few? Very good questions. I hope you get some answers to those questions. Jeff Deskovic, very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you as well. Thank you for having me. Thank you.